Well, good morning. Uh, it's our Tuesday morning pastor's coffee and uh, glad to uh, share some thoughts with you from the Word of God. I want to mention a couple of things first. Uh, one is this Saturday at 9 a.m. here at the church. We have our men's uh, breakfast. Encourage all the guys to come on out, spend some time together. Uh, and then also on May 8th, we have our Queens Arise, our women's conference that'll be uh, happening here at the church on Saturday, May 8th. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Bernadine Daniels be our guest speaker, have workshops going on. It's going to be a great day for the ladies. So, hallelujah. Uh, I hope you can join those times of fellowship. I want to just uh, share a couple of uh, couple of things from even what we shared about on Sunday, dealing with uh, being the kingdom-minded church. We see in Scripture that throughout the Bible, God's agenda is His kingdom. Uh, Genesis, you can begin in Genesis and walk through Scripture. God's agenda is His kingdom. And uh, God's kingdom is His authoritative governance executed in all creation. Uh, it's a theocracy. We live in a theocracy where God is the one who's, who's God. There, there's not other gods. He's the God. He's the one who sets things in order. We shared Sunday that there's three crucial components to a kingdom. One is a ruler who's empowered with sufficient authority. The second is a realm of subjects who fall underneath of the authority. The third is the rules of governance. There are rules of governance that God has set in place, things that are God's uh, decrees of how things work and his ways. Uh, Tony Evans says, says this, Therefore, the kingdom agenda is the visible demonstration of the rule of God over every area of life. Therefore, the kingdom agenda is the visible demonstration of the rule of God over every area of life. Kingdom means king's dominion. It's the rule of Christ. It's a rule of God. And so it's his rule in every area of life. It's not like God is only a Sunday morning God. It's every day, every minute, he's the one who is the one who rules and reigns as we live in his kingdom. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to read another quote out of Tony Evans' book called uh, One That's Embraced. He says this, The foundation on which the kingdom functions is that of an absolute standard of truth. The standard of truth is non-negotiable, non-adjustable, and transcends cultural, racial, and situational lines. Truth is fundamentally God-based knowledge, since God is both the originator and the author of truth. And so I want us to just kind of zero in on there's an absolute standard of truth. It's not based on my situation. We live in a culture where it's situational ethics. I change depending on the situation. No, no, no. God has given absolute truth by which we can base our life on and stand on. When I was down at the Creation Museum and at the Ark here a couple months ago, I was so gripped by, because uh, I began to ask, I said, God, where did our culture, how do we get so, it seems like there's so much confusion. And he says, we've left absolute truth. We live in a culture of relativism. And I looked up that name, the word relativism. It says this, a view that ethical truths depends on individuals in groups holding them. So with this idea, you can have your truth, it's true for you, I can have my truth, that's true for me, but there's no absolutes, there's no absolutes. God says there is an absolute standard of truth. God has declared to us in his word, the truth, the truth, the truth. In Judges 17, six, I just wanna read a couple of scriptures here. Judges 17, six, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Everyone was selecting what their truth was. There was no absolutes. There was no king. There was no one who had the authority to set the, the guidelines or set the rules. And so everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. You can never come into unity in that. You can never, there, there's going to be everybody doing their own thing. And that's what we see here in the book of Judges. We see it again in Judges 21, 25. Let me get there. Judges 21, verse 25, says this, In those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So does that sound familiar? Does that sound like the culture that we're in? That everyone is doing what's right in their own eyes? 
God wants us not to, he wants, to, wants us to realize there is absolute truth that we can base our life on. And let me just, I want to just share a couple of scriptures I did share Sunday morning. Encourage you to listen to the message on uh, the kingdom-minded church. We started talking about getting foundations in our life and really encourage you to take the time to go and, go and view that. Uh, really feel like God gave some great revelation that's going to be a great help to help set a course for us as we continue to move on. We, you can't build a house without a right foundation. And if our foundation is all broken up, we're not going to be able to build on top of it. God wants us to get a right foundation, a right foundation. There's so many things that are feeding into us to try to get us to believe things that are not biblical truth, that are not biblical truth and beginning to influence us where we start saying, well, this is right, this is right. And I shared several of them Sunday morning and can't encourage you enough to, to listen to the message from Sunday morning. But let me just share a couple of scriptures. Isaiah 5, 13. Isaiah 5, verse 13. It says this, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. They don't have knowledge of the truth. Why are we in captivity? Why is God's people here in this portion of Isaiah in captivity? Because they have no knowledge of the truth. Their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. They were experiencing famine and they were ex experiencing thirst. Why? Because they didn't have any knowledge. They didn't have knowledge. Now, Hosea 4, verse 6, and many of you could probably even quote this. I want you to understand uh, God's desire for us to be in the word of God, so that we can know the truth, so we can know the truth. Hosea 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why are they destroyed? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. And it goes on in this, because you have rejected knowledge. They lack knowledge because they're rejecting knowledge and they're believing a lie. They're, they're being inundated and flooded with all kinds of other stuff that is not true. And they're mixing it in with biblical truth, and they're getting, and there's confusion that's there. And so he's saying there, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I've also rejected you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. So we see here God saying that they they were perishing. They were having, they were uh, being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge, because of a lack of knowledge. Now go to Acts chapter 17, and I want to just end here with just a couple of scriptures here out of one out of Acts, and then I'll just quote another one out of Jeremiah. But Acts 17, verse 17, we need to have a love for the truth, a passion to seek out the truth, not buying into every wind of doctrine, not buying into the latest news reports, but going to God's word and getting rooted and grounded on the word of God. Now look here in Acts chapter 17 as uh, Luke is writing about the, the people of, of Thessalonica. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. He, or he, he's speaking about the people of Berea. He's talking about people of Thessalonica. They didn't receive the word the way the people at Berea did. These were more fair-minded. The Bereans were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and search the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. The people at, at Berea received the word and they searched it out daily to find out if these things were so, to find truth, to find truth. Jeremiah says, uh, you, I, I, your word, he said, I took it and it was, the, it was the delight of my heart. He ate the word, he ate the word. He said, I took the word and I ate it. And I ate it. And God wants us as his people to take the word of God in, devour the word of God, digest the word of God, where our life is based upon the truth, the truth of God's word, not on our culture, uh, shared about different situations, the circumstances, but our life is based on God's word, on the truth, on the truth, on the truth. I shared a story Sunday morning of the idea of going to a restaurant when we go to restaurants. When you go to a restaurant, do you go and the waiter comes over and he he hands he or she hands you the menu, the waiter, waitress, they hand you the menu and then 
you open it up and then they begin to explain things to you, what's on the menu. Do you then close it up and then walk out of the restaurant? No, you didn't come there just to look at the menu. You came there to eat. And often we can come, we can go to our Bible and we just kind of look at the menu, but we don't eat it. We don't take it in. We don't digest it. We don't let it become what we anchor and root our life upon. And I want to encourage you as a believer in Jesus Christ, not to let the doctrines of this world, we could look at Romans 1, we could look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. Again, these are all scriptures I shared Sunday morning. And you can see where there's all kinds of information coming from out here, trying to influence us, trying to uh, bring a mixture to what we believe. And God wants us to believe the truth. God wants us to get rooted and grounded in the truth. God wants us to eat the truth. So encourage you, parents, ground your kids in the truth. I shared about evolution. That's so opposed to the scriptures, so opposed to the word of God. And we've got to come back to God's word and let God's word be our foundation. Let God's word, let the truth of the word of God be what we root our life on. So I encourage you uh, today and the Lord, encourage you to be a student of scripture. We're gonna have a class in June, a six week class on how to engage the scriptures, how to dig into the scriptures, how to dig out the gold, how to dig out the truth of God's word. I encourage you, encourage you to be a student of the word of God, to dig in, I encourage you to think about being part of this class, engaging the scriptures. And then again, just wanna encourage you, listen to the message from Sunday morning. I believe it will really stir your heart and encourage you to train up your own life and then those around you have influence to speak the truth in love. So have a great day. Father, I just pray you release revelation upon, uh, upon your people. God, that we would be people who love the truth. Not ones who reject it, but God, people who love the truth. And God, we would be like the Bereans. We would be like the Bereans who search daily the scriptures who search daily the scriptures for your truth in Jesus' name. Hey, have a wonderful day. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you this Sunday.